All right. Hi everyone. Very good afternoon. Am I live? Hello. Very good afternoon. Hi Rutuja. <laughs> How are you? Hello Venkat. Very good afternoon. Aja, aja, everybody come, come quickly. Call your friends. Uh, share the video with your friends so everybody can come together and we can start. Hi Khyati. Hello Shri. How are you guys? How are you guys? Hi everyone. Hi Sushma Jyot. Hi Shaili. Hello. Very good afternoon. All right. So, um, are you ready? Today is going to be a comparatively much easier chapter. Much easier chapter comparatively. Ready everyone? Okay. Everybody ready? Everybody ready? So, we start. Yes? Sab aave? Sab aave? Kirti, we will do that after this. Anyways, Kirti, we have already started with the neat um, Zero to Superhero series. So, we are almost done with Human Physiology. You can check the playlist uh, on our channel. Okay. Yes. We will do, uh, we will continue where we left off yesterday and we will start there. Yes, don't worry. This is not a Hindi channel. Uh, there will not be Hindi at all. Okay. Shall we begin? PCR I am taking uh, directly from our NCRT textbook just so that you don't miss any point from the textbooks. Shall we begin? Okay. All right. Chalo. So everyone's here. Most of you are here. Hi everyone. Very, very good afternoon. Hi Sahar. Okay. So now, um, today we are going to be starting with, we're going to be covering uh, biotechnology applications. But first we want to uh, finish off where we left yesterday. So we'll first finish that and then we'll do application. So today we've got a lot of time. So no rush. Ma'am is not, ma'am is in no rush today. I'm with you right now. We can uh, take the whole chapter. Okay. So yes, I hope that you all have uh, marked your attendance. I hope you've all gone and liked the video. I hope you've shared it with your friends on their groups, on your groups so that they all can come here too. And I hope that without go, without say, you all have already subscribed to our channel and hit the bell icon. Yes. So for all of those who are new to our channel, um, I welcome you. This is Vedantu and League channel. And I am the zoology master teacher here, Dr. Sindur. I have been uh, mentoring children from over 10 years for zoology preparations. And I have done my BHMS from D.Y. Patel College in Pune. All right. So now kids, before we start applications, I want to now continue with the biotechnology ending portion, right? Yesterday we spoke about, um, yes, yesterday we spoke about isolation of the genetic material. Correct? We spoke about isolation. In, in which way? Because we have to enter into the cell, whether it can be a bacterial cell, a plant cell, or we can be talking about fungus, correct? And in order to enter into the cell, you know that there will we need to penetrate through the cell. So to penetrate through the cell, we need to break down those membranes. And to break down membranes, for breaking down the bacterial membrane, we will use lysozyme. For breaking down the plant membrane, cellulase, fungal membrane, chitinase. So all the membranes need to be, whichever respective membrane we need, to be breaking down that is the enzyme which we are going to be using right so in this is the way how we want to obtain dna so first of all we have broken down all the membranes correct we've broken down all the membranes then we are going to be 
breaking down all the other substances for example rna rna can be broken down uh, by using ribonuclease proteins if are present proteins will be broken down by using protease enzyme so ultimately what do we have ultimately what are we going to be having we will have only and only dna dna is then going to be treated with what children tell me how do you remove the how will you see dna precipitating what do you treat it with batao tell me quickly what are you going to treat it with dna will be treated with what with forgot chilled ethanol you're going to be tr treating it with chilled ethanol very good rucha hi khushi very good srishti you you treat it with chilled ethanol so that dna can precipitate in this manner okay now we come to a uh, pcr polymerase chain reaction right so dna has been removed and how is dna supposed to be cut that you already know by using restriction enzymes and even uh, the same process is going to be done with your vector so your gene of interest will be cut your vector will be cut now they are ready so you can join them together with the help of ligase okay so ligase is added so that the the two dnas can mix together and they can form what what is formed you are, you are combining the gene of interest with the vector what is going to be formed quickly tell me on the chat box everyone everyone quickly tell me on the chat box what is going to be formed everyone is sleeping chalo jaldi se sun why is there so much sanata on the on the chat box very good you are going to form your r dna recombinant dna recombinant dna excellent so now comes the time where you want to now create multiple copies of this recombinant dna right so i will call that as you want to amplify the gene of interest you want to amplify the gene of interest okay and amplification means creating multiple copies is going to be done now who is it that um just a minute just a second kids pcr and yes all right so pcr polymerase chain reaction it was discovered by carry mulis important it was discovered by carry mulis he is the one who discovered the in vitro amplification of dna in vitro amplification of dna so in in the in vitro means what in the laboratory he was able to create multiple copies of dna what did he do the very first thing what did he do he knows that in this double stranded dna in this double stranded dna what is this double stranded dna your r dna this is the specific region which you want to amplify because what is that region going to be that is the region which is going to be your gene of interest that is the region that you want to amplify okay so very first thing what you need to do is denature it denature what is denaturation what is denaturation tell me kids it is when you are heating it and it will separate the two double the two strands of dna okay so by heating it we are able to separate the two strands of dna which we're going to call as denaturation then what are we going to do to create more strands now you have two strands separate now you got two separate strands correct so one strand over here and another strand over here now on these two strands you want to create more strands so what do you need first we need a primer okay we're going to be requiring a primer yes shaili we're going to require a primer now here is your primer here both the primers here are here we go 3 dash 5 dash and this one 5 dash 3 dash here we go so let's see where this is given in your textbook properly so it is the dna or the gene of interest is synthesized in vitro by using two sets of primers okay two set of primers is used and those primers are also going to be used with dna polymerase here we go it's going to be used with dna polymerase and once the primers are set they are attached then that will lead to extension so the next 
step we see here is extension. So annealing basically means addition of the two primers. Okay, two primers. Then annealing is done. Then what? We are going to use the enzyme. Which enzyme? DNA polymerase. This is a thermo, uh, thermo is stable. Okay, in heat. So this is a tac polymerase enzyme because we know that this tac polymerase enzyme is already able to withstand the high temperature. So tac polymerase enzyme along with addition of deoxynucleotides. Deoxynucleotides means what? Nucleotides for DNA. All right. And that is what is giving you the two new strands like this in this manner. Okay. If it undergoes after 30 cycles, we will see that this is now amplified to over around 1 billion times. 1 billion times it has been amplified. Right? Right? So we see over here, here we go. The enzyme is going to extend the primers using the nucleotide. So enzyme is also used and the nucleotide is also used and that's what causes what is going to be causing extension extension okay and the process it is repeated many times and the one segment of dna can be amplified approximately very important a billion times so one billion copies are made all right this is all achieved by the thermostable dna which we spoke about which is from the bacteria thermus aquaticus and the name of the enzyme is name of the enzyme is Hi Manish, TAC polymerase, okay, understood this kids, last I want to be discussing about the bioreactors, there are two types of bioreactors, okay, so once you got your, once you got your recombinant DNA, once you got multiple copies of your, of your gene of interest, now what, now you want to extract it out, okay. So, uh, it's, yes. So, now we will, we will be allowing this to grow even further. Most commonly, uh, we are going to be using bioreactors so that it can be cultured in um, large quantities. Okay. So, basically, we want this to be produced in a large quantity. So, for that, we've got bioreactors. Now, bioreactors also, now, there are two different types. So, let's see. First of all, when we talk about bioreactors, we are talking about large volumes, okay? Large volumes means 100 to 1000 liters. That is pretty large. 1000 liters of culture can be processed, okay? Culture means a growing medium, all right? So, bioreactors were thought of as vessels in which what are we going to put into the bioreactor? Raw materials, right? Also, the individual enzymes which will be required is going to be put okay and in this here the raw materials for biologically converting some specific products into something so microbial plant animal human cells anything can be used here now what why a bioreactor because it is going to be providing optimal conditions so that we can get the desired product Right? Obviously, for enzymes to be working, we need to give it optimal conditions, optimal growth conditions too. Like, like proper temperature, proper pH, proper substrates to be used will be added. Salts, vitamins, oxygen, very important oxygen. All of these will be provided in the bioreactor so that the growth can take place. Okay? So, you got here... Either you got a stirring type, okay, a stirring type, here you go. This is the simple stirred, here we go. The first one, simple stirred and the second one, sparge stirred react, tank reactor, okay, where a sterile water is going to be used. So, stirred tank reactor is cylindrical, but look at the base. The base of it has to be curved. It has a curved base. And also, mama makes buttermilk at home. So, how does she make? She agitates it. So, over here, there's going to be also in this for agitating it. Okay? Also, agitation can be done here so that oxygen can be available. Alright? So, stirrer is going to facilitate mixing and oxygen availability. 
Alternatively, air can be bubbled through the reactor. Okay, and over here, when you see the sparge stirred reactor, we will see that there is already sterile water being put into it, and the bubbles are going to be there, and bubbles will increase the oxygen transfer area. This is what is important. What is it that is a good point about sparge stirred tank bioreactor? The very fact that bubbles being present will dramatically increase the oxygen transfer area bioreactors and uh, pcr all done bioreactors and pcr all done now kids i want to start with applications okay now i think we should start with applications everyone ready Everyone ready? Shall we start with applications? Yes, Rutuja. Everyone ready? We'll start with applications now. Perfect. Perfect. All right. Let's start. So, when we talk about biotechnology, you know now what is biotechnology. Basically, you know it is making the recombinant DNA, putting it into the host, allowing it to multiply in the host, and then creating um you know or creating multiple copies of it after it has it after the recombinant has been formed and then you would obviously you know a uh, downstream process means downstream process i think you remember it will be you know uh, testing it making it undergo various conditions to see whether it is surviving under certain conditions or not now once we know the science of it now we want to see where all can it be used okay so the the different types of applications of biotechnology can be in therapeutics, medicines, diagnostics, genetically modified crops, okay, to enhance our agricultural practices, processed foods, okay, bioremediation, waste treatments, and also in energy production. So these are all the various applications of biotechnology, which has obviously been useful for us, okay, in all ways. Now, three critical research areas of biotechnology. Research areas are, one, it is going to be helping in providing the best form of catalyst, either a microbe or pure enzyme. We need to be creating optimal conditions for the catalyst to act. And after this, downstream processing needs to be done so that whatever is extracted, at the end, what are you getting? What are you getting at the end? After all the work that you're doing, okay, what are you getting at the end? You, uh, let's say you go for a part-time job, okay, you work in McDonald's, you're, you're working day and night, flipping burgers, giving fries, uh, collecting money from the customers. At the end of the month, why do you do all this for your salary? You do it for your salary, right? So, thank you, Bala. So, you do it for the salary. So, salary is your protein. Exactly the same way, why are we doing all this? Recombinant DNA, host, vector, everything. Why so much drama? Why so much tamasha? Only so that you can get your desired protein. Because the gene is taken because we want the protein out of it. Central dogma, central dogma, DNA to RNA. RNA is ultimately going to help in making that protein. Okay, so that is what our main motto is let's first talk about applications in agriculture okay so what are or how exactly is biotechnology used to increase food production let's see that okay first of all there's going to be agro there are different types of agriculture okay agrochemical in agrochemical what is used chemicals are used insecticides pesticides all that is used then a new a newer one comes that is organic nowadays you go to the shops now you see in, in everything you want to buy now there will be an organic form of it too ha huh. the organic form will be at least 50 to 100 rupees more but they will label it very nicely organic now you go and order vegetables also online a huh? different section comes all together organic and you know that that organic is going to increase your bill by 500 rupees so you choose okay so agrochemical or, or organic, okay, or organically there is no chemicals used in the growing of that plant. The third way to enhance food production would be genetically engineered crops, 
okay so we are now going to study in this chapter how exactly genetic engineered crops are made okay everyone with me so we see um, in the chapter they've explained here they've explained here agrochemical based agriculture agrochemical okay agrochemical was the first one i was talking about where insecticides pesticides all that was used okay we're talking about green revolution green revolution in india tell me who is the father of green revolution everyone who will tell me father of green revolution who will tell me father of green revolution Jaldi say it shouldn't take this much time. Who is the father of green revolution? Norman, ah, uh, all over. Swami Nathan was in India, all over. Norman Borlaug, very good, Sachri. So green revolution helped in tripling the food supply. It tripled the food supply, but still that much was not enough. because if the food supply was tripling then even the population was tripling to so, bhai is not enough okay so what has happened here yields have increased due to yields have increased due to there have been now better management practices were put and also we had to use chemicals so that whatever is being grown can be preserved can be safe okay they will not be destroyed off or diseased but what are the drawbacks drawbacks is that bhai these chemicals are very expensive go and tell the farmer anyways in india you know what the situation of our, our farmers are very difficult situation for them we are also paying so much money for our vegetables but out of that how much is actually reaching the farmer you never know so for them even these agrochemicals for using them are expensive okay and also one thing is there the conventional breeding method you you've read this in uh, when you did plant breeding okay with the um, you know collecting all the germplasm and everything so conventional breeding method does not allow for the increase in yield with the existing varieties okay so these are drawbacks of the agrochemical one okay and the second one organic ones so you know how um, you know bio fertilizers can be used for that now coming to the third one the third type of way to modify agriculture can someone tell me if i want to modify agriculture what is the terminology used for that what is it called as if i want to make our crops more nutritious whatever what do you call it as rasleen what is it called as if you want to add nutrition to the crops what are we going to be calling it as can you tell me on the chat box what is it going to be called as genetically modified crops those are the crops but what is that technique called as what is the technique called as it's called as bio fortification it's called as bio fortification bio fortification once you have done bio fortification you've enhanced the uh, crop in its nutrition then that crop will be called as a genetically modified crop or genetically modified organism understood after bio fortification what your result is will be called as genetically modified understood so that is your genetically modified organism after bio fortification so the the genes of plants bacteria fungi animals all of these genes can be manipulated hai na it's not only humans manipulate humans humans are now going to the extent of man manipulating plants bacteria fungus animals whatever comes in front of us we are ready to manipulate it yes or no whatever comes in front of us we are ready our scientists are ready our lawyers are ready in any species comes in front of us we are ready to manipulate it yes and we have done that so genetically modified organisms have been created by manipulation so we see here genetic modification has what has it done it's made crops more tolerant to abiotic stress correct what is abiotic stress 
uh, things like cold, drought, salt, he, salt, salinity increasing, too hot temperature, all of these are abiotic stresses. So the crops have been now able to be tolerant to that. Hey, now we say now you um you make the child's uh make the childhood very tough. You okay, don't pamper the child. Then when he grows up, now he can he can withstand anything. Any sort of pressure, any sort of tension you give him, he will have the ability to withstand it. Utnai when you are going to do lard pyar, when you are going to do so much of nakhre uthana and pampering na, those kids when they grow up, they're gonna be very very. It will be life is gonna be very tough. <laughs> so. reduced reliance on chemical pesticides obviously now if we are going to genetically modify that plant we will modify it in such a way ke after doing that much kharcha after doing so much expense you don't want to spend more on insecticides pesticides then why are you doing this so make it not reliable make it make it that it doesn't have to rely on chemicals all right so these are the pest resistant crops then reduced post harvest losses so immediately after one uh, crop has been removed you do not need to again you know clear out everything and throw away the waste again that same soil can be used also increased mineral usage by plants so in such a way that the soil is going to be staying good for a long time you do not want to every season every now and then keep changing the whole soil layout also most importantly we need to improve the nutritional value of food obviously when your mama gives you milk most of the times your mama will mix something in milk hai na when i was small na complan boy complan girl and we used to drink it our whole life and still our height stayed that much only <laughs> but still parents are still putting i still put bon vita horlicks milo what not comes okay so basically um you would always want whatever is being taken in you would want its nutrition to be even better so improve the nutritional value of food but for example here golden rice is created right golden rice for what because golden rice rice is having a large amount of vitamin a what does vitamin a do what does vitamin a do tell me what does vitamin a do what is vitamin a do vitamin a means retinol retinol the golden rice is having retinol and that retinol is going to help in the development of rods yes or no rods help in which vision children rods help in which vision <laughs> boost is the secret of my energy on energy rods is the yes for better eyesight rutuja you have rods rods is for dim vision rods is for dim vision and dim vision is also called as which vision very good shruti scott topic okay so if rods are less this leads to less amount of rods leads to night blindness acha along with rods there are also cones and both rods and cones are found in which layer of the human eye they both are found in retina both are found in retina yes what are the other um, what are the other two what are the other two layers along with retina what are the other two layers of the human eye quickly tell me and then we'll continue what are the other two layers along with the retina don't you remember choroid and outermost layer sclera very good shruti very good okay chalo let's continue so now we are going to first study about um bt bt means what what is bt batman no what is bt bacillus thuringiensis it's a virus right what is it it's a virus right bacillus thuringiensis virus right virus or what is it it is a bacteria 
it is a bacteria and this bacteria is going to be able to produce a toxin which is the toxin bt toxin why is this bt toxin so good listen this toxin wherever it is present okay and if at all um, an insect goes and eats it a particular insect we will talk about then it will make that insect die very good because that insect was eating our plants it's anyways a, it is anyways a parasite for us so this toxin if it is naturally present in the leaf if it is naturally present in the in the plant and if the um, if that parasite goes and eats the plant it will die on its own did we have to put any chemicals no did we have to put any insecticides nothing so this bacteria is going to be able to produce a bt toxin because it is having a bt toxin gene okay and that gene is able to be expressed in plants you are able to express that in plants why do we want to do this because after doing that after putting it into the plant we do not need insecticides all right and the plants itself become resistant to insects and that's why we're going to call this as a bio pesticide okay it is a natural pesticide that's why we're going to call it as a bio pesticide nothing no sort of chemicals involved for example you all must have heard of bt cotton bt rice bt corn tomato potato soya bean okay now talking about the bt cotton most important okay we see here that strains of the bacteria strains of this bacillus thuringiensis bacteria are going to be able to produce proteins which is which can kill certain insects the insects can be killed that too without insecticides so what do we want to be killing lepidopterans for example tobacco budworm army worm okay this is important kids it's there in your ncert textbook please look it up please look it up this is important um lepidopterans coleopterans that is beetles dipterans for example flies and mosquitoes now shri i will come to that i will come to that shri give me one second okay so these three examples are important please mark it in your textbook lepidopterans coleopterans and um dipterans lepidopterans are nothing but tobacco birdworm or army worm okay then it can also this bt toxin can also act upon beetles it can also act upon flies and mosquitoes okay so bt strain can be used if at all in the farm these are affecting okay now how does this work how does this work bacillus thuringiensis okay the the uh, bacteria has got your the bt gene and that bt gene is going to be forming protein crystals during a particular phase of the growth okay during a particular phase of the growth it's going to be forming crystals the crystals are the ones which contain a toxic insecticidal protein it is a protein okay the crystal is nothing but it's containing a protein which is going to be able to kill the insect that's why it's a toxic insecticide but it is inactive okay when when the insect goes and eats the leaf or when the, whenever that insect is going to eat that um if it goes inside its stomach that bacteria goes inside the intest the insect stomach it is ingesting it and then what is the gut of the insect is it alkaline or is it acidic the gut of the insect is it acidic or is it alkaline it is alkaline our gut is acidic so if this toxin comes in our gut it dies nothing happens to us but the gut of the insect is alkaline so if this toxin enters into that gut then it's going to get activated okay the gut ph which is alkaline is going to activate it how by solubilizing the crystals crystals are now dissolved hence they get activated and then the activated toxin what will it do look at how it works okay look at this diagram beautiful diagram look this is the leaf this is the leaf okay on which the crystals are there you can see these red color crystals 
now this insect okay this worm is now ingesting it all right now can you see how the crystals this is the um here we go this is the whole gut of the insect this whole part is the gut of the insect so inside here can you see now how these crystals have entered crystals have entered inside what are the crystals able to do they are able to create holes they are able to perforate the walls so can you see how the the crystals have dissolved and they have created holes in the gut so what's happening all the food is going to come out can you see how all the food material have come out all the food material came out and this now is going to starve due to no food in the gut and it will die ultimately it's going to die the cells will burst and the insect will die why all because of this crystals okay these crystals were activated because the gut was alkaline alkaline gut helped the crystals to dissolve and activate it clear wow look at shruti's worms very cute so we see here the activated toxin is going to bind to the surface of the mid gut and create spores that causes cell swelling and lysis and ultimately it's going to die all right now we see here most bt toxin genes are insect group specific okay they are able to kill insects look at this very 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 important the name of the gene is cry gene now one is cry ye chota wala cry one is cry a big cry this is capital letters denoting the protein when it is cry small letters it is denoting the gene understood the difference between this cry and this cry hai na when you are talking about when when the when the person is crying loudly it's the protein when the person is crying softly it's only the gene okay so this bt toxin genes they depend upon which crop are we talking about which crop do we want to you know take care of and what is the pest that harms that crop so obviously if you want to go to the uh, field and you know that in this field uh, there are too many too many mice are there okay what will you put over there obviously you go and put a snake okay so uh, you know this is the trouble causer so you know how to treat that trouble you know the solution of it okay similarly in over here we've got the insects okay cotton boll worms and cot corn borer for taking care of cotton boll worms two genes are responsible cry genes cry 1 ac and cry 2 ab for cotton boll worms cry 1 ab for corn borers is this clear everyone this is there in your textbook please mark it very important cry 1 ac and cry 2 ab for cotton boll worms cry 1 ab for corn borers clear 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 everyone tell me now let's move on and let's go towards snake dal the <laughs> I am surprised there are no snakes in the uh, in the chat box. नहीं तो उधर भी डाल देते. Someone had someone had put uh, worms also, ना? Kiliya, Shristi, very good. All right, let's continue. So we see here pest resistant plants. Pest resistant plants. Okay, goat eat, very good. Now. when we want to create pest resistant plants where you want resistance against nematode means aschelmenthes aschelmenthes okay what are we going to which nematode are we talking about miliodigin incognita miliodigin incognita dekho aa gaya snakes yeah very good shreya hi shreya how are you Where is where are all these people? Where is Nivel? Where are all these people? Oh, guy up! Everyone is sitting and studying. Good. All right. So, Miliodigin incognita. What is it going to do? It will infect the roots of tobacco plant. 
okay why will it infect the roots of tobacco plant because that is where all the nutrition is the roots is where all the nutrition is going to be and if it does that do you know tobacco tobacco although we may curse tobacco but tobacco is giving it's it's a cash crop it is proving to be um the source of income for so many industries hai na yes or no gutka yes or no gutka gutka <laughs> gutka so tobacco everybody knows vultures bulao jaldi se snakes aa gaye very good rutuja so this tobacco if at all do you know something if tobacco fields are burnt also now what will happen everybody there will be do will be hi rasleen i really wish i could do <laughs> imagine that just imagine what will happen dhumrapan smoking is injurious to health but still people smoke okay so if at all um these tobacco plants if their roots are infected with nematodes it will reduce the yield and if tobacco is less then imagine how many industries are going to be majorly super duper affected super duper affected right so how do you want to how exactly are we going to create a strategy to prevent the infection very important strategy here everyone please pay attention now we are now going to be learning about rna interference rna interference rna i or you can call it as silencing okay so let's see how it's happening first of all this is going to be taking place in all eukaryotic organisms as a cellular defense tell me one thing prokaryotes e coli prokaryotes have their own cellular defense what is it how do prokaryotes destroy any foreign gene that comes inside their body what do they have how do prokaryotes destroy any foreign gene prokaryotes tell me kids oops prokaryotes how do they destroy any foreign gene very good they have restriction endonuclease very good similarly when we talk about eukaryotes eukaryotes they have a special enzyme special protein called as dicer dicer slicer dicer slicer dicer what are you going to do with the dicer chop 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 what are we going to do with the diaper diaper what are we going to do with the dicer we are going to chop 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 what are we going to be chopping with the dicer if there is a double stranded rna if there is a double stranded rna then this dicer will be expressed only then this dicer will be expressed if there is a double stranded rna okay so this means that in our body we don't want any double stranded rna if at all a double stranded rna comes our natural defense mechanism will become activated yes so this rna interference mechanism takes place in all the eukaryotic takes place in all the eukaryotic organisms as a cellular defense okay what's happening here there will be silencing okay chup kara do chup kara do make it make it quiet silencing a specific mrna why and how because we are going to be inserting a complementary double stranded rna or we got there there's going to be a double stranded rna so the mrna which will be made will be quiet okay it's going to bind and prevent translation of mrna let's see how that is working okay let us see how this is working look over here kids we have now over here can you see my little worm are you all able to see my little worm here who is this who is this who has come kon aa gaya meliodigene incognita which plant is this tobacco this is tobacco plant 
okay now this meliodigin incognita is going to be a parasite for root cells because root is the place where all the nutrition is that's the place where all the nutrition is okay now how are we going to take care of this they have created a technique for this what is that technique all about look that technique is going to be all about first they will make okay pay attention to me very carefully first they will make a double stranded dna okay a double stranded dna now when this double stranded dna is inserted into the plant cell okay and this is over here the plant genome when you insert this double stranded dna inside the plant genome what will happen transcription will happen okay transcription will happen and when transcription happens of a double stranded dna it will create a double stranded rna so now in this plant cell a double stranded rna has been created then in this double stranded rna one is a sense strand another is an anti sense strand so you've got a sense strand and you've got an anti sense strand the minute the eukaryotic cell okay the minute it is going to identify a double stranded rna it is going to activate the protein dicer okay it's going to activate that dicer enzyme and dicer will go and chop 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 dicer will go and chop 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 yes what will it chop it is going to chop the double stranded rna and it will make small 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 pieces out of it these small pieces are what we call as small interference rnas all right now to these small interference rnas the rnas enzyme will be attached rnas enzyme will be attached and when there is rnas enzyme along with si rna si rna is small interference then together it's creating a complex what is creating a complex rna is enzyme along with the si rna all right let's write that down si rna plus rna is enzyme creates risk what is risk rna induced silencing complex it's a complex that's created which we're going to be calling as risk now this risk is now going to be activated this risk is activated all right and when it is activated it is not going to be able to it is not going to be able to undergo any translation because the mrna will be destroyed so once risk is activated mrna will be destroyed and hence there is no translation now if there is no translation then there is no protein correct if there is no translation there will be no protein all right so we see here agrobacterium vectors okay help us to introduce these nematode specific genes into the host okay agrobacterium vectors are going to help us introduce these genes into the host and after introducing the dna gene we saw here both sense and anti sense are produced in the host then since they are complementary they formed a double stranded rna that double stranded rna silenced the mrna of the nematode mrna of nematode is now gone it's silenced so the nematode cannot survive in a transgenic host what is a transgenic host transgenic host is a host where we have created the conditions in which that bacteria or that nematode cannot survive because the double stranded dna will be put inside the inside the nematode if if a double stranded dna is put then what and will express the interfering rna and then the host will die it will not be able to survive on that tobacco plant so we have been able to do that without addition of any chemicals any insecticides any pesticides that is what we call as genetically modified organism yes the pdf will be available in telegram
because rutuja uh, double stranded dna was taken and that is creating a double uh, double stranded rna very good shreya so now done with applications in agriculture let's now come to applications in medicine the most fun part of the chapter applications in medicine so application in medicine biotechnology is used in order to create humulin what is humulin am i audible to everyone is my is my voice loud enough everyone kurnoor is my voice lo loud enough thank you anil is my voice loud enough to everyone am i audible okay yes so when we talk about humulin okay humulin is nothing but human insulin okay human insulin what is insulin where is it produced what's are uh, what are some facts about insulin that we need to know insulin is formed in the beta cells of islets of langerhans of the pancreas okay you know the pancreas is an is an uh, heterocrine gland and insulin work function it is a hypoglycemic hormone so it basically does the work of taking the glucose out of the blood putting it into the cell so it takes it out of the blood so it is a hypoglycemic hormone reduces the blood sugar level if there is a deficiency of insulin it can cause diabetes mellitus okay now the gene for production of insulin is present is located on chromosome number 11 chromosome number 11 gene of insulin is located okay now if at all someone is suffering from diabetes you all know over here what the treatment will be any diabetic patient is supposed to be given insulin right so we all know to treat diabetes mellitus okay they took you know that insulin is required so first insulin okay insulin not diabetes insulin was initially tried to be taken out from certain animals for example cattle pigs and they were given to humans but then what happened alag species different species different reactions it gave rise to certain allergies in the humans so that was chokri not allowed not not uh, sustainable then what did they try to do they try to make oral drops okay they try to give it in the form of oral drops but if oral drops of insulin was taken insulin is which hormone insulin is a protein hormone it is a protein hormone and if it is taken orally then protein will be digested in the stomach protein will be digested that protein hormone insulin will be digested in the stomach because stomach has pepsin so we don't we couldn't do that also so now what this is when they decided something needs to be done and this is when biotechnology comes into the picture american company in the year 1983 okay which company eli lilly eli lilly company eli lilly company it um, they they knew that uh, pro that chromosome number 11 is the gene responsible for creating pro insulin okay even in our body it is always present as pro insulin first pro insulin has got peptide a peptide b and peptide c but then what do we need to do when it needs to be activated okay peptide c is going to be removed and only peptide a and b will be joined when they are joined they are joined with disulfide bonds you can see here they are joined with disulfide bonds and peptide c is free and gone when it is only a and b that is what we are going to call as not pro insulin but now this is functional insulin okay so how did how did eli lilly create this first of all <clears throat> the gene was taken for creating insulin the host use was e coli the vector used was pbr322 you know what pbr322 is artificial vector correct this by using this 
okay all these three they made the insulin that insulin was non functional and what did that insulin do it joined after that after this non functional was made then they joined the a and b peptides they removed the c peptide and they joined it with disulfide bonds and after joining that that is what you get as the functional insulin called as humulin that's what is called as humulin clear everyone now let's move on and let's go to the next part and that is gene therapy okay gene therapy where gene uh, genetics this biotechnology is going to be used for treating as a therapy so this was first performed in 1990 on a 4 year old okay she was uh, born with a defective ada gene ada means adenosine deaminase it was defective now what is this adenosine deaminase used for it is used for proliferating wbcs helping in the growth of wbcs so if this gene is not working if there is a deficiency of ada then the immunity will be low and this low immunity is what we will call as scid severe combined immunodeficiency scid please everyone important no there is no menti today we will keep menti for neat revisions beta we menti or v quiz now we have got v quiz we are keeping v quizzes for neat revisions okay yes shruti so what is the treatment used here ert enzyme the enzyme is not there right in that patient so enzyme replacement therapy but if at all enzyme is going to be injected into that child then the enzyme will be used up so this needs to be done every 90 days where injections of ada will be given to that child alternatively if it is found during the growth stage only that there is a defective or there is a um reduced or that gene is not there gene is not functioning ada gene then what is to be done okay um and if at all embryonic treatment is done by inserting the ada gene using a retrovirus then if it is done in the embryo na stem cells then you don't it's done one time and she will no longer have that problem if it is done after birth okay then it has to keep on being done even bone marrow transplant can be done but if it is done in embryonic stage if it is if the gene is inserted if the gene of interest uh, the ada gene is inserted into the stem cell then that can be as a permanent it can be a permanent cure permanent cure okay understood this all right understood this kids so when we talk about ada deficiency okay in some children ada can be cured also by bone marrow all right in others it can be treated by enzyme but if enzyme is given it needs to be done repeatedly every 90 days okay the problems here are that they are not completely curative because every time you need to give them treatment okay completely curative can be done only and only when only and only when there is what if it is put inside the stem cell in the embryonic stage that will be permanent cure all right okay next we come to kids come on next next topic molecular diagnosis molecular diagnosis techniques to early diagnosis now you've heard of one pcr we have done that another one is enzyme linked immunosorbent assay tell me enzyme linked immunosorbent assay used for use for detection of aids hiv elisa test is done for detection of aids or hiv yes or no 
PCR is something that we have seen here. PCR is now routinely used. Okay, it is routinely used to detect HIV. Okay, in suspected AIDS patient. Also, it is used to detect mutations in genes in suspected cancer patients too. And it is a powerful technique to identify many other genetic disorders. All right. We see here, um, look here, yeah. So here a single stranded RNA or DNA which is tagged with radioactive probe is allowed to hybrid, create a hybrid in the complementary DNA, okay, where there are many clones of cells, all right. That is going to be followed by detection using autoradiography, all right. Now, what do we see here? How is this exactly working? Whatever is the clone, okay, Whatever the clone is, if it has a mutated gene. So, what do we see here? Let's say you got, I have two examples. Okay, I'll split the page into two. Okay, these are the normal DNA which has been split. Normal DNA which has been split. They have their own nitrogenous base. Okay, they have their own nitrogenous base. T, A, C, G, C, C. Okay. Now let us say that there is a mutation in one of them. Let's say now over here there is a mutation. Okay. Instead of A, if at all over here it is replaced with T. So now can I say that this is a mutation? It is a mutation. And if we introduce okay if we introduce there over here look over here if at all the clones are introduced okay a single stranded rna or dna tagged with a radioactive molecule is allowed to hybridize to its complementary dna so you're going to insert these and on inserting they will find their complementary matches but the one which is, let's say this is a gene which is for cancer. It should be inactive. Okay, it is a gene which is for cancer. It should be inactive. So ideally this should go and it should be complementary to it. So this is G, this should be A, this should be T. Okay, this should be T. So now tell me, over here there has been a mutation. It has turned to T. Instead of A, it has become T because of the mutation. Will this be able to go and be complementary there? Will this be able to go and attach over here? Will the hybrid be created? Tell me. Because of the mutation, do you think a hybrid will be created? Tell me kids. There has been a mutation. Will the hybrid be created? No hybrid will be created. So this means that mutation is there. Because there is no hybrid. So we see here the clone having the mutated gene will not appear on the photographic film. Because the photographic film only shows double stranded DNA. But the clone will not be able to create double stranded DNA. Because there is a mutation there. So it will not be visible in autoradiography. Okay. Why? Because the probe will not have complementarity with the mutated gene. Understood this? There will be no complementarity with the mutated gene. This is a very um, good question. You can expect it to come in need in any form in your board exams too. Okay. Very important. Nice question. Okay. So now, after PCR, we now come to enzyme-linked immunosorbent assay. What is the main principle behind this? Antigen-antibody interaction. Okay, infection by pathogens can be detected by presence of antigens. Yes or no? You, uh, you want to detect the presence of a pathogen by detecting the antigens. If the antigen is there, obviously the pathogen is there. Okay, and also by detecting the antibodies which might have been synthesized. Now, if any antigen is being put into your body, your body will not just stay, huh, anidu, anidu, let it come, let it come. Obviously not, you will start fighting. 
you will be like hey get out so obviously antibodies will be created whether the antibody can completely destroy it or not is a different thing but your body will try to create antibodies so if you are able to find the antigen if you're able to find the antibody then obviously that pathogen must be there in the body that's what we need to understand here and that is being detected by this very here enzyme linked immunosorbent assay okay now last point where we come to the topic of transgenic animals the topic of transgenic animals the animals very um, this can be considered as a very cruel thing people think of it as because we are using those animals whether it's a rat, whether it's a sheep, whatever it is. We're using the animal, we're manipulating its life, we are jeopardizing it because we are stronger than it and only for us to study that animal, only for that, okay? So transgenic animals are the animals which are basically, they're having a normal physiology and development. They are used for studying diseases, okay? Also, it is used for studying normal physiology, studying normal development, used for studying a disease so if at all that the gene which creates the disease is put in the animal okay the animal will express the gene and while the animal expresses the gene the scientist will be able to study each and every expression and that's how the scientist is able to study each and every sign symptom of that disease so we have manipulated that animal we have inserted a gene into that animal and that gene and that animal is going to suffer. That's what we call as a transgenic animal. That's why nowadays you see many cosmetic companies or anything, you know, whatever is being newly launched, uh, if it's very highly priced, they make it a point that they're going to tell you, they're going to let you know that all of this has been created without using any animals as trials. Because this is what happens. Transgenic animals are used to create and to test so many things. Okay. Also, biological products, if they want to study, if they want to study the safety, sorry, if they want to study the safety of a certain vaccine, then also the transgenic animals are used. So before putting it in humans, they will trust it, they will trial it on an animal. Also, chemical safety testing. Okay, but as I told you, this is very sad. So yes, it comes with its own ethical issues too. Okay, so basically in order to take care of all these biological problems, we now call in the engineers. Yes, engineers, please come and help us. So there is always going to be a genetic engineering, a genetic engineering approval committee, G-E-A-C, genetic engineering approval committee. And this committee will be able to make the decisions. Because sometimes just imagine, na, scientists will be like, okay, come on, let's get it done. I want to see this. I want to see this. That's when the engineer will step in. Enough of your drama, enough of the using these animals. You cannot go further than this. That's what this committee is going to do. It will make decisions regarding the validity of the genetically modified research and the safety of introducing these organisms for public services. Understood? Okay. Also, what is biopiracy? Piracy nowadays, no, they say ban piracy, no piracy, piracy is banned. Um, you, we used to watch um, movies are in the theater and then there you're watching it in your house the very next day. Pirated movies. Movies are one time in the theater, you're hearing it, it is uh, 400 rupees a ticket. So what do we do? Download it. How? Pirated version. So what is piracy? What is piracy? Chori. <laughs> what is piracy? Chori. Hai na? Piracy is what? Stealing. Basically stealing. God, summer, it's hot. Chori. So, the use of bio resources by multinational companies, okay, and other organizations, MNCs remind me, when I was in college, na, uh, some seniors, engineers and all, uh, some friends are there, they would get their jobs, na, oh, 
if you got a job in an mnc got a job in an mnc got a job in mnc now you see na every 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 here and there organization is an mnc only such a big deal they used to make out of it and then we were like okay now when will we reach next year when will i clear my university exams and people around me are like oh they got a job in mnc and now look <laughs> everybody is in an mnc okay so the use of bio resources by multinational companies and other organizations without proper authorization hai na if you saw kabhi khushi kabhi gham within one day in your tv did you get authority for that no from the countries and people concerned without compensatory payment so what happens here if at all you know the a big company a big country comes and they come to a local farmer they come to a very local poor villager they tell that villager okay give me your give me what your product is i will take it and i i'm going and they will say are bhaiya give some money at least they'll give them here take 1000 rupees is that enough compensatory payment for what their discovery is no okay so that's what we will call as bio piracy okay we're not talking about movies here so the indian parliament has recently cleared the second amendment of indian patent bill okay you know how the indian courts work na tarikh pe tarikh tarikh pe tarikh you guys know how indian courts work hai na next date next date next date so by the time you realize that oh your crop has been stolen someone else is selling it that person will make a million bucks out of it and you're still going to court so you don't know oh my god indian uh, the court the, the legal system here uh, has to be accelerated on i don't know what speed because if at all that's what i said na if someone uh, if at all someone hazar mein acche se lehenga aayega aa jayega thousand rupees mein nice lehenga you'll get so what we get what we see here is in our um, in our parliament okay if at all this amendment or the, you know what an amendment is okay amendment means a change which has been made okay so in the indian patent bill has been made why because originally you know how it was if i find out that someone has taken my crop gone to usa and is selling that thing he's making a million bucks out of it i don't want him to be continuing making that kind of money either you don't make the money or you give the money to me i am not going to tolerate putting it in your bank account not at all if i go to the indian government and tell them look this is happening they'll be like okay tell me tell me about it after 3 months tell me about it after 6 months now come to the next date come to the next date in that time that man is minting money and by the time i will get my justice he's made a good bungalow for himself on beverly hills or something so i cannot tolerate that so that's why amendment was made ke bhaiya if something like this comes na then let it be treated as emergency hai na bhai leverage do let it be treated as emergency give it some uh, fast track you know patent terms emergency provisions either you give me the money or you don't make money also research and development initiative also main leke dungi all right so kids we have completed biotechnology principles and practices we have also completed applications how many of you are going to join me tomorrow for human health and disease one shot gurnoor has come na the chat box is going to be uh, full of smilings full of full of laugh to theek hai coming tomorrow everybody coming tomorrow we will do human health and disease for sure amudhini okay yes gurnoor yes rutuja yes shruti yes ritika very good short short we are going to do sample papers for uh, term 2 we are going to be doing sample papers for for term 2 two. two sample papers i'm having ha huh. so srishti now you know what you're supposed to do when you come okay sample papers we will be doing sample papers will have most probable questions i guess we're not shreya okay rudhuja call nikhil 
all right so kids um it was a lovely session and let me take this opportunity to all of those who are um watching me watching us on youtube um just to make sure that the next um almost one and a half two months you've got left for your need preparations okay you are doing it utilizing each and every day in a very systematic way this is the best time you need to buck up you need to make sure every day is utilized properly which is why vedantu is bringing to you a super awesome crash course light the course is going to be providing you with 120 recorded interactive sessions now it's not only a recording okay yes you're getting a recording of the master teacher teaching you that but while you are watching that recording a specific timing will be given for you to come to that class where in that timing when you are watching this the video there is always live a class teacher with you present over there so that whatever your doubts are will be solved by the class teachers there will be other students as well in the classroom with you so all of you can revise together class teachers can solve all of your doubts together then you can you can even ask your doubts personally by unmuting yourself and camming yourself with the class teachers okay so it is a very much live interactive session the course is going to as i told you in class support with with class teachers there also you will be given um the pdf of our study material that is the tatva you can improve your rank with 10 part test and 10 full test imagine that 10 part test 10 full test during this time duration what more can you do you know to to accelerate your score at this level after every session an assignment is going to be given um and that is you've got around 90 assignments throughout the whole session so kids uh, an awesome opportunity to utilize all these remaining days very wisely which are the teachers which you will be provided um the recordings with for physics we have rahul pande sir uh, who has got 7 years of teaching experience an awesome professor for uh, physics all your um formulas when to use what the derivations absolutely wonderfully taught Sudarshan sir for chemistry okay and we've got our favorite bhumika ma'am for biology all right so kids you can see here here is the physics schedule here is the chemistry schedule when you see the botany schedule and let me just go through the zoology said schedule where you can see here all the chapters animal kingdom structure organization cell biomolecules all the way up to even human reproduction principles molecular evolution all these chapters are going to be taught to you from basics okay you will understand everything of this chapter so yes all these are the number of sessions that will be conducted and there will be assignments given after each session so what is it that the vedantu crash course is different how is it different from other crash courses most important there is going to be a very high in class interaction and that is exactly what you need at this point of time that whatever doubts you are having will be resolved also because our class teachers are sitting right there with you along with you in the class there is live class in class doubt support okay there will be live quizzes and you know how vedantu is we have our quizzes we have our hot spots we've got the leaderboards too right leaderboards are there milestones will be there so that you know which part of the chapter is done for you which part of the chapters are pending for you all right so um the course sale price is 1800 after discount recordings are going to be available accessible to you until your neat exam if you're having any doubts regarding this crash course please whatsapp all your queries to this number take a screenshot of this number and this is just what you need to be writing there so they know um what reference you came from you can write my name over here and post your doubt okay so if uh go through the link go to the link if you are planning on joining this crash course as one of the most best ways to utilize these end months for yourself okay the link is there in the description box you can join the crash course and don't forget to apply the coupon code so that you get your discount apply the code sipro uh, to avail the discount for yourself all right so yes um crash course 2022 
uh, just 2700 please go there uh, check the price check your coupon code enter it in and uh, join join very quickly so that you can utilize all these days optimally all right i will see you all uh, tomorrow with one shot of human reproduct of uh, human health and disease all right kids <laughs> oh god gurunur gone on those days i don't do that <laughs> all right you guys